crawling up the roof of my chest. <laughs> Thank you very much, Phil. Oh, this is lovely. Uh, yeah, my name's Will, or as my nephew calls me, Uncle Willie. <laughs> Until he found out what Willie meant and started calling me Uncle Penis. <laughs> and then my brother, when he got involved, he says, No, you can't call it that because penises are rude. So now until the end of time, I am Uncle No Penis. <laughs> I don't know. But good news, uh, I got married a few months ago. <laughs> during lockdown. Ooh. And because of COVID, my, fam my, uh, my wedding had no family, no music, and was all done within the hour. It was the greatest day of my life. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Would not change it for the world! Uh, we're very happy, but we're not having kids. Let me put it this way. She does poetry, I do yoga. Could you imagine how unbearable our family would be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kanye, it's Felicity's turn with the avocado smasher. <laughs> <laughs> Finish your organically retrieved hummus, your mother will not tell you about the plight of baristas in Tangier. <laughs> Icarus, for the last time, the yoga mat is not for Pilates! <laughs> this is the only room where that joke's worked. <laughs> I was about to say, you go to a certain point in zone two and suddenly oh, they don't like dick jokes, they like jokes about gentrification. <laughs> I have found my home! <laughs> yeah, my other half is uh, German. Uh, I met her online, uh, LinkedIn. <laughs> I know, I didn't realise my CV was sex worthy. <laughs> My resume opens doors and legs. Oh. <laughs> Is that sexist, by the way? I need to make sure. Could you just raise your hand to say if I'm saying something sexist? But don't say anything, because it might ruin my flow. I'll just count it at the end. Ooh, 15 sexist jokes. Don't do those again. Is that all right? I have a feeling your other half would have got on well with me, but never mind. <laughs> I have no jokes at all. But anyway, yeah, we met online and everything, and she's very professional, actually. She's so professional. She treats our daily life like it's, like it's work. Like, the other day, uh, actually every day, she sends me the same message, the same words that she said to me the first time we made love. Keep being productive. <laughs> <laughs> But good news, we had a threesome. Mm. Bad news, it was via conference call. <laughs> now I like talking in bed, but not when I have to keep saying, Are you still there? <laughs> yeah, and she's also teetotal. Oh. And because of this, she, she does not like it when I practice the ancient British custom of drinking at the airport in the morning. <laughs> British custom, is it? Yes. Yeah, goes back a long time, three generations maybe. Long <laughs> but she doesn't understand it. I try to explain to her. When we check in, we get the pints in. But apparently it's stupid because <laughs> it's 6 a.m. <laughs> and we're not on holiday. And I just drove us to the airport where the spoons were a picture of Carling. <laughs> the pubs were shut, what was I supposed to do? Drink at home like I have a problem? <laughs> that said, I am actually sober now. I've been sober for quite some time. Uh, and because of sobriety, I'm probably going to live a lot longer. But there are positives too. <laughs> <laughs> I could... <laughs> He felt that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> you sad swat. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's good. It's good though. I can finally pay off my gambling debts and take up cocaine. <laughs> I've heard good things. Apparently, it's just sexy coffee. Come on. <laughs> sexy coffee. Mostly thinking about going vegan so I can finally be alone. 
definitely some time alone these days. I used to drink a lot. I used to go out in Soho all the time, drinking, going mad, you know, getting kicked out of the bar for shouting at a table, and then getting not getting kicked out of the bar, even though I'm doing coke because I'm the only person there, and then waking else up in someone else's bed at 3 a.m. and they're not there. You know, that was mad. Now that used to excite me. Do you know what excites me now? Sitting down. <laughs> I love sitting down. But I used to drink in a place called... Uh, has anyone here heard of Gosport? Great, you're my people. I used to live in this horrible place near Portsmouth called Gosport, and it was just pubs, 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 and a submarine. Which became a pub. <laughs> they called it a pub marine. <laughs> hey! Go on, get one in there. But yeah, I remember one day I was uh, drinking on a Tuesday afternoon, which is always a bad way to start a story. <laughs> <laughs> and I settled for a small little boozer called the Lamb and Duty Free Cigarettes. <laughs> And inside, oh, it's like, you know when you pick your audience, you go, all right, I'm telling the joke to him now, because he, he gets it. He looks like me and he gets it. Anyway, he, uh, he, he I went in. I, I love it when I don't have to do anything. Just carry the flow. But I went in, there were two old fellows uh, drinking ale. And there's a guy in the bar about 30, tapping nervously onto his phone. And every five minutes, the... Uh, fruit machine would go, you can't handle the truth! Because it was based on that Jack Nicholson film, The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, ten minutes after sitting down with a warm pint of cider, a group of youths rush in and start hassling the guy at the bar. And 30 seconds pass, one of them plunges a knife into his stomach, they run away out the bar immediately, and while the barman's trying to get an ambulance, one of the old fellas looks up and goes, He's got plenty of time to stab people, but no time for a pint with Grandad. Oh. <laughs> See, that one worked outside of Crouch End. <laughs> so, anyway, I did recently go on holiday with my other half, obviously not to Gosport. Uh, we went to Barcelona. Ooh. And I say Barcelona, not Barcelona, because I'm English, not a wanker. <laughs> That worked outside of London, too. <laughs> I think it was Luton, actually. Uh, uh, but, you know, for our birthday, I wanted to do something special, so I said, uh, we booked a table at a Michelin star restaurant in central Barcelona. Has anyone here ever been to a restaurant? <laughs> I'll continue the rest of the joke. Anyway, it was a special thing. It's her birthday. I ring them up and say, could you please, please do something special for her because it's her birthday. And he went, don't you worry, Mr. Press. And of course we will, because just like me, could not do a Spanish accent. <laughs> not do it. So all through the meal, I'm wondering, oh, what are they going to do? Are they going to bring out the violins? Are they going to bring out a special Spanish birthday cake? Like put some candles in a paella? No. What happened at the end of the meal was someone brought out the bill, and at the bottom of the bill, next to a 30 euro service charge, someone scribbled, Happy B Day. <laughs> <laughs> Happy B Day. The last time I was that offended was when I got an email from someone calling me Mr. Last Name. <laughs> oh. And this was the time I decided to propose in oh. German. Now the phrase propose. Oh. Do you, do you know any? Kleiner. Kleiner? Mm. Same. Uh, <laughs> which is the problem. Yeah, the phrase is simple though. It's Pistol Meiner Frau wird. Will you be my wife? Very simple phrase, very simple. Now that I'm English, we do not do additional languages. We do Cockney, Mockney, and a little bit of French if you bore me. <laughs> That's it. So the time came and I was wondering what am I going to do? I might screw it up, I might get down on one knee instead of saying the golden phrase. Willst du meine Frau werden? I forget everything and just go, Frau? <laughs> <laughs> and if she says yes, I've scared that poor woman into marriage. <laughs> Luckily, that did not happen. What actually happened was, um, at the end of the meal, I got out of the ring, and I looked her deep in the eye, got down on my knee and everything, and I said to her, Bills to mind foul there. And her jaw dropped, a tear ran down her cheek, and she softly grabbed my hand. And I will never forget what she said next. Mine are Frau Verden! Mine are Frau Verden! Not mine, Frau Verden! <laughs> Of course I'll marry her! 
telling you, this is incredibly romantic. <laughs> because the most romantic thing in German culture, as we all know, correcting someone's grammar. <laughs> Guys, you've been awesome. I've been well present. Thank you so much. <laughs>